As the Socialist Party faded from the U.S. political scene, some of the farmers who had embraced its ideals would take their politics north, to Canada. Today, Americans think of Canada as a more radical, a more socialist place. Well, the irony is that uh, Canada's first socialist politicians, Canada's first socialist intellectuals are Americans. And that is something that people today have forgotten. Uh, socialism, when it comes to Canada in an effective way, is an American import. Between 1898 and 1915, nearly a million people emigrated from America to Canada. Lured by cheap farmland, most settled in the western Canadian provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, the last North American frontier. They brought their knowledge of how to wrest a living from the soil and a set of political convictions rooted in their experience. Farmers in the prairie provinces of Canada and the northern Great Plains of the United States all faced similar problems in the early 20th century. They were all growing wheat. They felt that they were being gouged by the railroads, by the bankers. They felt that the market conditions were working against them. Rather than seeing this in terms of impersonal market forces, they personalized it and viewed bankers, railroad men, lawyers as the, as the enemy. Uh, the way you express your protest at the turn of the century is, hey, wait a minute, why don't we nationalize these things? And from that, uh, as the institutions resist, you move uh, fairly logically and pretty quickly towards radicalism. And they're radicalized in Canada in the same way, by the same people, in the same organizations as they are in the United States. But let me emphasize, these organizations start not in Canada, but in the United States. Every major U.S. farmers organization would resurface in Canada in some form. By the 1920s, these organizations and their successors began to make their voices heard throughout the prairie provinces. They were very soon able to influence electoral politics in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta simply by the power of their numbers. But it's really not until the Great Depression begins on the prairies, really in the 1920s, not the 1930s, with drought, with the collapse of the wheat market, that farmers begin to contemplate forming their own independent political force. In 1932, a new political party emerged from a conference in Saskatchewan, the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation, the CCF. The CCF is a kind of big bang among radical groups. Uh, radical farmers, uh, socialist labor unions, and radicalized socialist intellectuals, many in universities, many also in the Protestant churches. Uh, and they get together and they write a platform that calls for the socialization essentially of the means of production and the means of finance. I mean, it's, it's, it is a classic socialist platform. The party would later moderate its platform to appeal to a broader base. In 1944, the CCF swept the provincial elections in Saskatchewan, becoming the first socialist government in North America and leaving a lasting imprint on Canadian politics. Well, CCF stayed in power in Saskatchewan until 1964, and uh, one of its last acts was to bring in a socialized medicine scheme for the province of Saskatchewan, uh, which they imposed in the early 1960s and which had such tremendous appeal that it actually pushed Canadian politics in that direction later in the 1960s. Uh, the CCF's ideas were adopted by the governing Liberal Party of Canada, and the Liberals were the ones who finally brought in National Medicare uh, in, in Canada. Socialism found more of a following in Canada than in the United States. In 1961, the CCF became the new Democratic Party. It is still largely socialist in its convictions and still a force in Canadian politics. In America, some of the ideas championed by socialists also found their way into the mainstream, ideas like 
unemployment insurance, social security, and the eight-hour workday. But socialism itself never took root. Be sure to join us for the second episode of Heaven on Earth, The Rise and Fall of Socialism. For Think Tank, I'm Ben Wattenberg.